Hello all, I'm Gunam Adivanan from Officers IAS Academy. Friends, we are coming up with an exclusive live quiz program based on current affairs targeting 2024 prelims on a weekly basis. So every Saturday at 6 p.m. in our Officers Path channel, we will be coming up with this live quiz program. So how to participate? So for which you have to install an mobile application. So go to uh, either uh, App Store or the Google Play Store to download this application named Kahoot. Kahoot application. Download and install it. Right. So every Saturday at 6 p.m. in the live video, I will be giving you a seven digit pin. So you have to enter that seven digit pin in your installed application. In that Kahoot application, you have to enter that seven digit pin. Or we will give you a QR code if you are not interested in installing the application. You can scan the QR code in the web browser. You can open the page, web page. In that you can enter this seven digit pin number and you can participate in this quiz program. So once you enter the seven digit number, the application will ask you to give a username. So you have to give your username followed by your username please give your last four digits of your mobile phone number for example my username is guna8990 the last four digits of my phone number so like that you can create your own username that's all you are ready to participate in the quiz so in the live video so in the live video i will be showing you the question the question will be followed by four options as usual a b c d the four options will have a color code right so option a red color option b blue color option c green color option d yellow color so the four options will have four different color codes so in your mobile phone you have installed the kahoot application right so the kahoot application in your phone in your device it will show you four colored box only four colored box only in the video which you are watching in that live video i will give you the question followed by that four option i will be giving you the four option will have a color code right so if you are going to choose a as the right answer then a as red color then in your mobile phone you will have a red colored box you have to choose that that's all if the answer which you have chosen is correct and if you have chosen that quickly for every question will give you 60 seconds assume that i am choosing a a is the right answer and i am choosing within 20 seconds within 10 seconds based on how quickly i choose the question i have to choose the correct one and I have to choose it as early as possible so the one who is choosing at the earliest will be given more points so if I am choosing in 20 seconds I will be given more points if someone is choosing at 30 seconds then relatively lesser points right so this is how the quiz will work so at the end of the uh, program we will show you the leaderboard between the questions also I will show you the leaderboard at the end I will show you the final leaderboard the one with more number of points will be given a certificate, right? The idea of the quiz program is to provide you a real-time experience of solving the questions along with that competitive environment, right? I hope this program adds more value to your preparation. So along with this, we have um, a daily uh, current affairs hit list series, daily answer rating initiative so all these initiatives will give you a competitive edge in your 2024 prelims as well as mains right i hope this adds more value to your preparation so see you in the quiz till then bye take care a very good day to all of you welcome back to another session of officers general quiz it's great to have all of you back over here. This is Vilasni from Officers IAS Academy. I handle environment and ecology as well as current affairs over here. I hope all of you have logged into the Kahoot application. The game pin is 867051. So some general instructions as we discuss all the time. So there will be a total of 15 questions. Each question will have 30 seconds duration. Each question will have 
four different options corresponding to four different color codes. So make sure you think wisely before you answer. And then in the end, we will take a look at the leaderboard post that. So without further delay, make sure that we encourage healthy competition over here. And let us straight away get into the first question of the day. So the first question for all of us, which is the state animal of the Union Territory of Ladakh? Fine. So the options are Chantani, Snow Leopard, Baral and Uriel. So take time, think wisely and think carefully before you answer. Time is ticking, bring in the responses. 37 answers so far, wonderful guys. Think fast, the fastest mind wins and time is key. The time is ticking, few more seconds to go. Wonderful, so time is up. So most of you have given Snow Leopard, wonderful and Snow Leopard is the correct answer. So recently Ladakh had come up with its own state animal and state bird. The state animal was Snow Leopard and the state bird is regarded as the black neck crane. So let us understand few things about Snow Leopard. So Snow Leopard is a high altitude cat, fine. It is known for its unique white cream colored skin. Apart from that, it is known for the unique rosette patterns which are there on its skin. Snow leopard is also regarded as a keystone species. So what do you mean by a keystone species? They are species which play a major role in determining the prey population. They have a very important place in the food chain of a particular ecosystem and they ensure that the prey population is kept in check. Apart from this, the government of India also has Project Snow Leopard to conserve this beautiful species. So that is with this particular question. So moving forward, let us take a look at the leaderboard for this particular question. So wonderful. So we have Hylin on top, followed by Sri Sai and Priya. Great. Bring in more responses, guys. The tables can turn anytime. So further moving on to the next question for the day. So the second question for you, Madhisis are residents of which of the following country? Option A, India, Option B, Bangladesh, Option C, Nepal and Option D, Sri Lanka. Think wisely before answering. Time is ticking. We have 37 responses so far. Wonderful. Bring in the responses guys. 43, 44, more to go. Fifty answers, five more seconds, wonderful. So great, most of you have given Nepal. Yes, and that is correct. Madhesis are defined as residents of Nepal, fine. And they are found in South Nepal region, specifically in the Terai region. And this is very close and in fact borders with Bihar in India. And in fact, they say that the communities on either side share similar characteristics, similar traits, similar cultural attributes and therefore marriages between both across the borders is very common over here. So this is with regard to Madhesis. Fine. So now let's take a look at the leaderboard for this particular answer. So wonderful Hylin is on top and great Adi is back in the second place and we also have Sri Sai in the third place and wonderful Matthew you have gone up by 14 places. Great job. Keep climbing. So further moving forward to the next question of the day. So the third question for you, which of the following Indian states share their border with Myanmar? So option A, Assam, Arunachal Pradesh, Tripura, Manipur. Option B, Arunachal Pradesh, Manipur, Assam, Nagaland. Option C, Arunachal Pradesh, Nagaland, Manipur, Mizoram. And option D, Arunachal Pradesh, Meghalaya, Tripura and Manipur. Think carefully, recollect the Indian map and think wisely before you answer. So Myanmar. So time is up guys. We have 50 responses for this particular question. Wonderful. So most of you have given option C and yes option C is the correct answer. So let us understand few things. Fine. So Myanmar is a country in Southeast Asia. Fine. It is regarded as the second largest country in Southeast Asia post-Indonesia. 
fine so indonesia comes in the first place and after that we have myanmar so talking about the borders that myanmar shares with india we share both a land border which extends up to 1600 km we also share a maritime border in the bay of bengal so these are few things with regard to myanmar fine so now let's take a look at the leader board for this particular answer so the tables have turned adi has come to the top place wonderful adi great job keep going manikandan is in the second place good job sivaranjani is in the third place so here any time the tables can turn so guys make use of the opportunity remember the fastest mind wins first fine so think wisely before you answer jiva you have climbed up 15 places which is wonderful so bring in more responses guys and answer diligently so let us move forward to the next question for the day question 4 which of the following statements is true with reference to anthrax anthrax is a viral disease option b it is a zoonotic disease option c it is contagious and option d there is no vaccine available for the treatment of anthrax so think wisely guys and answer so there are totally 36 responses so far wonderful keep bringing in the responses guys few more seconds to go time is ticking okay so time is up so most of you have given option b it is a zoonotic disease and yes this statement is true so let us understand few things about anthrax so anthrax is basically a bacterial disease which is caused by a bacteria called as and bacillus anthracis and this bacteria is also regarded as a rod shaped bacteria so statement 1 is definitely incorrect talking about statement 2 anthrax is a zoonotic disease so zoonotic diseases are those diseases which can trans which can be transmitted by animals to humans and yes this statement is definitely true anthrax is contagious no actually anthrax is non contagious so who says that anthrax is not regarded as contagious because person to person transmission in the case of anthrax is rare and talking about a vaccine for anthrax yes in fact in 2019 a team of indian scientists had come up with a slightly upgraded version of the existing va vaccines for anthrax so here they say that this anthrax vaccines efficacy is very good it targets both the bacteria and the toxins produced by this particular bacteria which is bacillus anthracis so these are few things with regard to anthrax and anthrax was also in news because recently in africa several countries are witnessing anthrax outbreaks so here in anthrax primarily cattle sheep horses are primarily affected and the animals which are affected by anthrax witness high fevers constant blood oozing out of their nostrils and several wounds in their body and if left untreated it can also result in the death of the animal so these are few facts for you with regard to anthrax so now let us take a look at the leader board for this particular question so wonderful highland you continue to remain in the first place great and then in the second place we have dos and followed by that we have varsha seven players have reached answer streak 3 that's amazing great going guys so now let's move forward to the next question for the day so question number 5 amber gris also referred to as floating gold is produced by which of the following organisms option a dugong option b sperm whale option c walrus and option d polar bear so think of all the animals that you are aware of in this particular question and think wisely floating gold okay it's an interesting tag so we have 43 responses wonderful few more seconds time is ticking few more seconds to go bring in your responses guys okay so most of you have given sperm whale wonderful so let me tell you a few facts about amber gris so talking about sperm whales fine only 1% of sperm whales can produce amber gris so amber gris is basically produced in the intestine of the whale so what happens over here is that sperm whales as a part of their diet they consume many squids many other organisms and these organisms have certain hard parts on their body which can scratch or which can tear the intestine of sperm whales so to prevent this tearing from taking place 
sperm whales produce a grayish colored waxy substance called as ambergris and in time ambergris gets solidified it gets turned into lumps and is either vomited out or excreted out by sperm whales ambergris as it remains floating in the water for a long time has a very high value in different international markets across the world leading perfumes for aroma therapy for diagnostic purposes for preparing certain traditional medicines apart from that even many cuisines across the world use small quantities of ambergris in their diet you will be surprised if i tell you that even the world's first recipe of ice cream had a small bit of ambergris in it so this is the value of ambergris and finding it is also rare and in fact ambergris is also called as fool's gold because many a times ambergris looks like an ordinary stone and many people mistake ambergris to be a stone or a stone to be an ambergris so all such cases are possible talking about sperm whales they are regarded as the largest of the toothed whales fine and sperm whales also are hunted massively so there is a need to conserve them better a group of sperm whales is referred to as a pod and pod contains the females and usually the younger ones and sperm whales communicate through echolocation that is through sound waves in water so these are few fun facts for you with regard to ambergris and sperm whales and if interested make sure you go and read more about them so now let us take a look at the leaderboard for this particular question so going by the leaderboard highland you continue to remain on top wonderful great going and in the second place we have das and after that we have varsha so four players just hit answer street 3 great going guys bring in more responses so now moving forward to the next question for the day nehru trophy boat race is held annually in which of the following states option a kerala option b tamil nadu option c karnataka and option d goa think wisely guys think carefully before you answer nehru trophy boat race time is ticking bring in your answers we have 58 responses 49 responses 50 wonderful few more seconds to go bring in more responses guys every second matters fine okay so time's up and wonderful most of you have given kerala which is great fine so let us understand one thing the nehru trophy boat race primarily takes place in the poonamada in the poonamada lake near alappula of kerala fine so one important thing over here is that it is not associated with any religion or ritual fine so the first time it started happening was in 1952 it is named after pandit jawaharlal nehru and hence the name nehru trophy boat race one interesting feature about this is that there are huge snake boats fine so these boats called as snake boats can accommodate close to 100 rowers and there is a competition which is held amongst them which is the famous snake boat race fine and for so this the nehru trophy is also given fine so keep all these things in mind and moving forward let's take a look at the leaderboard for this particular answer so here highland you remain the undefeated champion so far with a good score followed by that is das and after that we have varsha great going so praveen amazing you've had the highest answer streak of 6 so keep going praveen more answer streaks to hit on fine so moving forward let's take a look at the next question for the day so the question for you bioluminescence which is the natural ability of an organism to emit light is used for which of the following activities option a predation option b reproduction option c communication and option d all of the above think about bioluminescence guys and think about the different organisms that you can keep in mind with regard to bioluminescence for the answer so far wonderful keep bringing in more responses few more seconds to go time is ticking and time is key so make sure you respond diligently so great time's up okay so most of you have given d all of the above and yes my dear friends d is true fine so bioluminescence it is defined as the ability of an organism to naturally emit light fine so jellyfish squids many organisms like this produce their own light and this light serves many purposes 
for example to escape from a predator so many squids when attacked by a predator they produce a luminous cloud and this luminous cloud confuses the predator and they try to escape from there and many other organisms like jellyfish they camouflage with water by producing these unique lights so certain organisms they have a molecule called as luciferin in their body and when luciferin reacts with oxygen these organisms are able to emit their own light so nature is so beautiful and what are, are the other organisms that you know which emit bioluminescence please recollect them fine so let us look at the leaderboard for this particular question so going by the scores highland you remain on top the tables have turned and varsha is on the second place great going varsha and we have das on the third place so adi very good you back with an answer streak of 3 so keep going adi fine so moving forward let's take a look at the next question for the day so the question for you question number 8 which international treaty aims to protect the ozone layer option a kyoto protocol option b montreal protocol option c basel convention and option d stockholm convention so think guys think diligently you have four two protocols and two conventions 43 answers so far wonderful great going guys time is ticking few more seconds to go ozone layer great so most of you have given montreal protocol fine so guys let us understand few things so the ozone layer which is present in the stratosphere is like a thick blanket around the earth and it protects us from the harmful ultraviolet radiations of the sun but the problem is that in recent days because we are using many substances like chlorofluorocarbons which are emitted by air conditioners refrigerators these substances in the form of aerosols have the ability to haste and to uh, accelerate the destruction of the ozone layer and as a result of which there is an ozone hole which is getting reported ozone hole is measured in dobson units so they say that whenever the concentration of ozone falls below 220 dobson units it is regarded as an ozone hole and to be honest uh, in places like antarctic especially the ozone hole size is largely increasing which is a great cause of concern so here one major protocol which aims to address the protection of the ozone layer is the montreal protocol it primarily says that there should be a great phase down of ozone depleting substances like chlorofluorocarbons and hydrochlorofluorocarbons fine it also says that because of ozone depletion many diseases like say snow blindness cancers can occur so these are few things about the montreal protocol so please go back and read about the ozone layer and its importance so now let's take a look at the leaderboard for this particular question so going by the scoreboard basha great going you've come to the first place that's amazing and below that we have das and below that we have anapurni fine so also ranjit you are the highest climber and you have climbed 13 places which is great so now let us take a look at the next question for the day The Niti Aayog was established in India replacing which former institution option A planning commission option B finance commission option C the economic advisory council and option D fiscal responsibility and budget management committee so think carefully guys think carefully before you answer the early bird catches the worm correct so i hope you've heard of this saying so time is ticking and time is key wonderful few more seconds to go bring in more responses 49 answers so far wonderful so most of you have given planning commission so please understand this so before the niti aayog we had something called as the planning commission fine and in 2015 the planning commission was replaced by niti aayog and this uh, body called as niti aayog has been a part of major development plans in india The Earthwise Planning Commission is known for bringing about the famous fire plants. So these are few information for you. And now let us take a look at the leaderboard for this particular question. So going forward, looking at the scores, Varsha, you remain the undefeated champion. Great going. And followed by that is Das, and below that we have Anapurni. So here, 
uh, Mati has moved up by six places. Great going, Mati. So try coming in the top six too. Fine. So going forward, let's take a look at the next question for the day. What is the amount of insurance cover available for accidental death under the Pradhan Mantri Suraksha Bhima Yojana? Option A, 1 lakh. Option B, 2 lakhs. Option, 3, option C, 3 lakhs. And option D, 4 lakhs. So think carefully guys. So 44 answers so far. Time is ticking. So carefully choose between the numbers. Great. So here most of you have given 2 lakhs and yes, 2 lakhs is correct. So please understand as a part of the Pradhan Mantri Suraksha Bhima Yojana, in the case of accidental death, 2 lakhs is being provided and in the case of partial permanent disability, it would be 1 lakh and also these are linked to the PM Jandan Yojana accounts. Fine. So read more about this and let us take a look at the leaderboard for this particular question. So going by the leaderboard, have the tables turned. Okay, so Varsha, you continue to remain on top. You're holding on to your place firm and strong. Great. And below that we have Das. And after that we have Anapurni. So yes, it was a tough round, tough question. I mean, uh, you had to choose between numbers. So three players lost their answer streak of five. So no problem, guys. More questions to go. So you can hit back your answer streaks. And now let us move forward to the next question for the day. So what is the interesting question? Identify the personality. Okay, so now here, also known as Manyam Virudu, this personality took part in the Rampa Rebellion in 1922 to fight against the injustices done to tribal communities. He was well known for mobilizing the tribes and training them in guerrilla warfare tactics. So here the options are Guru Gobind Singh, Sri Narayana Guru, Siddho Murmu and Aluri Sitaram Raju. So think carefully guys, Rampa Rebellion and who comes to your mind? Fine, 48 answers so far, time's up and most of you have given Aluri Sitaram Raju which is great. So the term Manyam Virudu basically means hero of the forest and yes, true to this name, Aluri Sitaram Raju was regarded as Manyam Virudu. He took part in the famous Rampa Rebellion. There were many tribes and they were uh, feeling exploited under British rule. So he mobilized the tribes, he trained them in guerrilla warfare tactics and although he was an outsider, he fought for the cause of the tribes and hence he was regarded as Manyam Virudu. So these are few things about Aluri Sitaram Raju. A separate district in Andhra Pradesh was created for him and recently also a statue has been created in the name of Aluri Sitaram Raju and the year 2022 marked 100 years of Rampa rebellion. So please read about such great freedom fighters who have contributed so much for our country. Fine. So moving forward, let's take a look at the leaderboard. So have the tables turned. So going forward, Vasha, great going Vasha. This is really wonderful. You continue to remain on top. And below that we have Das and after that we have Anapurni. So Shruti, you're back in the game. Great going, three in a row. More answer streaks expected from you. Okay. So moving forward, let's take a look at the next question for the day. So the next question for you, question number 12. Which country recently became the first in the world to legalize euthanasia? So here we have Netherlands, Belgium, Canada and Luxembourg. So think carefully guys. The 12th question of the day. So time is ticking. We have 41 answers so far, more responses expected, 44, 46, great, few more seconds to go, wonderful. So time is up and now looking at the answer, yes, so most of, most of you have given Netherlands and yes, Netherlands is the correct answer. So please understand euthanasia also referred to as mercy killing. So if there is a patient and the patient is facing severe pain, and does not want to undergo this uh, severe pain, then in this case, mercy killing is allowed. So in the case of Netherlands, they have become the first country in the world to legalize euthanasia. Fine. So this was why this was in news. So moving forward, let's take a look at the leaderboard. 
So the leaderboard for question 12. Okay, so now the tables have turned for real. So thus, all this while you were in the second position and now you have come on top. Followed by that is Varsha and below that is Annapurni. Also Sriman, great going. You've come back with three in a row, which is great. So let us see, uh, very, uh, we're just three questions away and let's see if, and let's wait and watch what happens. So moving forward, let's go to the next question of the day. What is the chemical formula of baking soda? So option A, NaCl, option B, NaHCO3, option C, NaOH and option D, H2CO3. So guys, put on your thinking caps, recollect the chemistry that you've learned in school and college. So wonderful, few more seconds to go. Few more seconds, time is ticking and we are in the 13th question. So last final set of questions are crucial. So time is up. So wonderful, most of you have given NaHCO3 which is great. So NaCl is sodium chloride and it is common salt or table salt. And NaHCO3 is the correct answer which is baking soda. NaOH is sodium hydroxide and H2CO3 is carbonic acid. Fine. So let us take a look at the leaderboard. So looking at the leaderboard, so Vasha is back. Wonderful. So Vasha is back at the first place and Das is in the second place. So there is a tight competition going on between Vasha and Das where they are interchanging places in every single round. And followed by that we have Annapurni too, great going. And below we have Manikandan and Sri Sai. The tables can turn anytime guys. Two more questions to go. You can push yourself to the top two. Four players have also hit answer streak five. Great going guys. So moving forward, let's take a look at the 14th question for the day. So the 14th question for you. This glacier is located in the eastern Karakoram range in Himalayas. It is the second longest glacier in the world's non-polar regions. India launched Operation Megdu to establish control over this glacier. So name the glacier. Baltoro Glacier, Vimu Glacier, Siachen Glacier and Milam Glacier. So think carefully guys, think about this glacier, Operation Megdut, what comes to your mind? So time is ticking, so let's take a look at the answers, wonderful, so majority of you have given Siachen Glacier, so that is the correct answer. It is also regarded as the world's highest battlefield, fine, so please read more about the different glaciers around us and also we should keep in mind that because of climate change, Many glaciers around us are melting and if these glaciers are going to melt, sea levels are going to rise and which can also result in a submergence of many coastal lands. Fine. And in this context, we should also keep in mind climate refugees which are increasing because of the effects of climate change. So let us take a look at the leaderboard. 14th question, have the tables turned? Wonderful. So Vasha remains on top, followed by that is Annapurni. And at the third place, we have Manikandan. Great going, guys. And three players have reached answer streak seven. That's wonderful. And now moving forward to the one last final question for the day. Question number 15, here we go. So going forward, Goomer is a traditional folk dance prevalent in which of the following states? And your answers are Karnataka, Rajasthan, Gujarat and Uttar Pradesh. So think carefully guys, Goomer, a traditional folk dance. So which state do you think it is performed in? 40 answers so far, 42, time is ticking. Okay, so wonderful, majority of you have given Rajasthan, yes. Goomer is a traditional folk dance of Rajasthan. It is performed primarily by the Bill tribes. Fine. And here in the Goomer dance, it has very graceful steps and women wear beautiful gagras and they dance around. There are very swirling motions. They clap their hands, they snap their fingers and it is a beautiful delight to watch. So if at all you haven't, then please do watch beautiful dances like this. So Indian heritage is very rich. Our folk arts, our music, our dances are very immense and diverse. And hence that is why we are also called as Incredible India. So I would also usher and encourage you all to learn a lot about traditional arts that you would have not been aware of. Fine? 
So now moving forward, let's take a look at the final leaderboard. So great, let's bring in the podium. And on the third place we have Sri Sai, wonderful Sri Sai. And on the second place we have Annapurni, great going. And on the first place, any guesses? Okay, so it is Varsha. So Varsha, you have been securing your place for a long time throughout the entire quiz. And great, you have come on the first place. So congratulations to all the winners and all the fellow participants. So remember, knowledge is key and it is important to encourage healthy competition, correct? And healthy competition in the form of quizzing is definitely going to be fun. So make sure you enrich yourself. Find, try to always be a better version of yourself. And in Officers Path YouTube channel, such quizzes will be made available for you to enrich your knowledge better. So a better version of you is always for the better, yes? So keep this in mind and make sure you subscribe to Officers Path YouTube channel. There are many courses launched over here which will definitely inspire and motivate you. So stay aware, uh, enrich yourself with more knowledge and keep yourself updated. And that's it for today and let's meet one again for once again for Officers General Quiz. Thank you and have